But now to Romania, which has some of Europe's largest tracts of forest, home to half of the continent's wild bears and wolves. Well, at least for now, but there is growing concern about the scale of illegal logging going on. Thousands of Romanians have been taking to the streets, calling on the government to act. But stopping the logging can be dangerous, as we discovered when we met with one brave activist determined to save his country's forest. The Domogled Valea Cerne National Park in Romania's southern Carpathians. This is a nature conservation area. Cutting down trees here is strictly prohibited. But on hikes, biologist Gabriel Paun is increasingly coming across logging sites that have left massive scars. Look at the way they felled the trees here. It looks like they really must hate this forest. This is a crime. It's a criminal offense. To stop it, Pound founded the environmental organization Agent Green. The biologist distrusts the country's environmental protection agencies. Most forest rangers are corrupt, he says, and work hand in hand with illegal loggers. That distrust surfaces when Gabriel Pound confronts the park's local director with his findings. What you're telling me isn't true. When were you there? Just now, I came straight here. It'll grow back. This is part of our regeneration program. What's going to grow there? It's been clear cut right in the middle of a national park. There's been no clear cutting. I have to go now. The environmentalist even catches the illegal loggers red handed and films them transporting away the wood. He follows the trucks for hours until they reach their destination in a nearby valley. A call to a special center aimed at preventing illegal logging activities confirms his suspicions. The shipment is illegal. The center says they'll inform the police. But the police never arrive. The trucks take the illegal wood to a plant owned by Schweighofer, an Austrian company that trades in wood certified as sustainable. At the entrance, Pound confronts security staff. Tensions ratchet up. This wood has been stolen from the national park and is being illegally brought into this factory. Get out of here. The argument escalates. A security guard sprays the environmental activist with tear gas. Coughing and retching, he falls to the ground. Timber is a very competitive sector in Romania. Foreign lumber firms are drawn here by the promise of high profits. They pledge, in turn, to create thousands of jobs. But where does the wood come from? This is the taped response from Schweighofer's director. I can't believe that we're being accused of endangering forests in Romania with illegal logging methods. We refuse to process any wood from national parks, even though the country's forestry laws permit logging in certain regions of the parks. But foresters who work in the nature conservation areas tell a different tale. Anybody can buy wood here. Doesn't matter who. They just have to pay the right price. Week after week, thousands of trees are felled illegally in the Carpathians. In some regions, there are now vast swaths of wasteland where forests once stood. Thanks to Gabriel Pound's detective work, Schweighofer could now have its certification withdrawn if it doesn't meet a number of requirements. This year, Pound received an award from the German foundation Euro Natur for his work protecting the Carpathian forests, forests which have remained largely untouched for 6,000 years. There's no water behind me, neither is there any plastic behind me. But plastic pollution is threatening the world's oceans. Edith, did you know that about 9 million tons of plastic end up in our seas every year? It's a shocking figure, NT. A lot of the beaches here in Africa are completely inundated with washed up rubbish. Islands like Principe off the coast of West Africa are especially hard hit. The No Plastic Grassroots campaign aims to involve the whole population in collecting plastic bottles. 
which can then be swapped for reusable stainless steel bottles made from plastic, uh, plastic free materials. Another great way to save the environment. In the town of Santo Antonio in Principe, 24 year old Selene Fernandez has a long hot day ahead of her. Her goal is to keep the island litter free, and today she's on a special mission. Bon dia. Good morning. I've come for the plastic bottles. It's exchange day today. So how's it going? Is everything ready? A lot of bottles have piled up in her grandmother's backyard. Every few months, it's time to get rid of them. Aren't there any more lying around? We've got to collect all of them. Come on. The bottles are valuable because they can be traded in. Everyone wants the biosphere bottles. It really motivates the kids more than anyone else. They collect as many as they can, so you hardly see any lying in the streets now. It's busy at the collection site and stays that way all day long. The entire island of Principe is a biosphere reserve. Sileni is a staff member and helps count the bottles. The Biosphere Reserve launched the waste project in 2014 with international support. A total of 450,000 bottles have been collected so far. 50 plastic bottles can be exchanged for one made of stainless steel. I fill the bottle with water, so I have something to drink at school. They have to have the exact number. Would you like a red or a gold one? If you bring me ten more plastic bottles, you'll get another one, okay? Dealing with plastic on an island is more complicated than on the mainland. A logistics company takes the plastic to Portugal, where it's processed by two recycling companies. Selene also has another plan for how to recycle the plastic. We've already ordered a machine that can make plastic thread out of the bottles. We could use the thread to make baskets and other things. That would be great. Principe has almost 8,000 residents. The economy here isn't self-supporting. Many goods need to be imported, which generates a lot of waste. Environmentalists are worried the plastic might also end up in the sea. The island has invited Spanish scientist Maite Asensio to inspect its beaches for microplastic, plastic granules that are smaller than one millimeter in diameter. Mixing sand samples with water is an easy and effective method to check the sample for plastics. It's mostly organic. That's good? Yes, it's a good sign. The beach seems to be very clean. But some fibers can't be seen with the naked eye. Some of it looks like hair, but it could be plastic. It needs to be analyzed. Compared to other islands in the Atlantic, Principe is doing quite well. Our samples on Gran Canaria are full of microplastics. There's a visible difference. Everything that's organic material on Principe is plastic there. It's a disgrace. For the environmentalists, this is good news. Their efforts are paying off. That's all we have time for today. We hope you enjoyed every bit of the show. I'm Neo Taigwe in Abel Kutaogun State, Nigeria. Thank you for watching. Well, today I get to have the last word, Mr. Neota Egbe. Don't forget to keep up with us on social media networks, Twitter and Facebook. Now, all the information you need to get in touch is right there on your screen. Now, it's also time for me to say goodbye to our Eco at Africa viewers. It's a good thing, though, that I'm doing this from this magical place. From next week, though, my colleague Joy Doreen Bira will be taking over and she'll be with you. Thanks from Nairobi in Kenya and see you next time on Eco at Africa.